Hey, it's Mike here at Seeker. I was going to do a video today on how to build a Mark 1. Uh, I've done one before on tuning transistors. I've already tuned the transistors on this one, so they're all ready to go. Um, but I thought I'd just do a kind of a run through on actually building the pedal and the assembly of everything. I've already done kind of boring stuff of just installing the hardware in the box. Um, the box already comes drilled and, and painted and, and labeled and everything. So that part's already done. But uh, I thought we'd do all the assembly, um, soldering, everything like that. And you can kind of see what goes into that. So here's the board, um, bottom of the board. <clears throat> and we'll just go through installing everything on the board, installing it into the box, and making this a pedal. So when we're done, it should look like this. Um, got a few of these to build today, so I thought I'd just um, go through one of these and build one with you guys. Um, put this aside for now, and we'll get to that in a minute. For now, we'll do the board. So I've got my transistors laid out here, and all my caps here. This is the LED. I won't need that till later. And this is a zero ohm resistor. That's for the bypass switch, but we won't need that until later. Um, but the rest of the stuff will all go on the board. So the top of the board is blank. There's nothing on it. The bottom um, just has some labels for some stuff, but uh, I don't really use them, but they're there. <clears throat> but essentially you've got uh, kind of a hybrid setup. So you have eyelets here. Um, so most of the circuit is still point to point. There's a few traces on the bottom. You can see there. There's one here that goes across and down to this pad. And those are just um, those are just hooking up all the grounds, and then up here you've got uh, one trace connecting these two. These are hooking up. Uh, this is hooking up the power, so the nine volts. In this case, negative nine volts. Um, and then you've got just a few traces for the ins and outs on the pots down here. So um, here's kind of the output into the pot, and then the output that goes to the switch. Here's the input from the switch that goes into the circuit. And then the this is just for the LED to turn the LED on and off. Um, but yeah, pretty straightforward. And then here's just the resistor that goes down to the attack pot from the circuit. Normally this would be all hooked up point to point, but um, uh, in an attempt to make these more streamlined, more affordable, some of this has been slightly automated, uh, but audibly, no no difference. Um, the traces here, which are pretty big, would just be um, wire instead. So, but it's all in the same place. So let's start assembling the circuit. Um, all the resistors here, different values. Um, I just know, looking at them, what's what, but um, I'll talk about that when we go through it and I'll kind of tell you what each one is and what it does. Um, caps, they're physically different sizes, um, but also different values. And then we've got our transistors here. Um, like I said, these are already sorted. We've got Q1, uh, which is CV7007. It's uh, made by NKT in probably the early 70s. Um, could be late 60s. Uh, I don't know the date code on that. Um, this is an OC71, missing a lot of the black paint, but once it's inside the box, um, it sounds just the same. It sounds really good. This is Q2, which is a pretty, I would say, medium gain, a little bit of leakage. And then Q3, this is a CV7355. I use these a lot for Q3. They usually have a lot of gain, not too much leakage, and they just um, kind of sound perfect to me in Q3. Uh, so. I'll install those on the board now, and we'll start, we'll kind of go um, left to right, so the circuit follows, uh, this way it goes from left to right as we go through the signal flow. So we'll start with 
the input cap. Uh, there's lots of bending when you're doing this. Uh, so the name kind of works, Tone Bender. Um, doing a lot of part bending too when you're putting it together. So we'll install the input cap. Sorry, that was kind of a bad joke. Um, now, we'll need next, there's a one mag resistor that goes from the base of Q1 to ground. So basically this, that means this solder pad down here is ground, but it also grounds the attack pot and uh, a few other components here like on Q1 you'll also see this 8.2K resistor that comes off of Q1's uh, emitter and helps bias the transistor. Um, next physically will be this, this cap, but um, I like to put um, just another resistor down here that'll go next to it. That way uh, this will sit kind of on top of them. So the next one is Q2's bias resistor, which I choose these really partly by measuring the voltage, partly by listening to the transistors. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about that, you can watch the transistor tuning video that I did. That was specifically about system tuning, but it applies more or less to this, which is a solar tune version. So we've got our cap that goes between the two stages, between the buffer stage and Q2 clipping stage. So I kind of bend the, the leads like this, and then that will uh, allow the cap to sit in there just so. These ones fit really nice in between the resistors, size-wise, not bad. Uh, let's see, next I will need a 2.2K. This also comes off of the same point, on, which up here, you can see that's where our, our link is. It's right here. Um, so this is coming off of power, the power input, so this is off your negative 9 volts, and that hits the collector of Q2. Um, so you can adjust this as well on Descry. I made this a uh, pot instead of the 2.2K resistor. It's really um, a fun mod on these to make uh, that adjustable. Gives you a big range of textures and you can do um, gating and open tuning and stuff like that. So next, uh, we'll do the same thing because uh, the next one is this big cap here, but kind of jump over to what the next resistor would be, and it's going to be another 8.2K. This comes off of the base of Q3, which is way up here, and then it goes down here. This is also ground, so you can see on the back, remember, where that um, traces, so that grounds that pad as well. And like I said, normally that would be um, hooked up with like a ground bus wire um, but it's just streamlined on these with the trace. Uh, oh, uh, next we will do the cap. So, same thing, I kind of bend them a little bit uh, offset so that they fit nicely in between. resistor is a 15k. I have gotten these mixed up before building these uh, when I wasn't looking close enough. Because sometimes they look, they can look similar or the order of the colors are just not exactly the same. Uh, but they're all the same colors. So sometimes it's good, good idea to check. But I am pretty confident that's 15k. And that's coming off of 
power also, so on the back there, that trace right there hooks up the power, and then that little solder pad in the middle, a wire will go to the power the power jack on, on the pedal. And um, that biases your Q3. It goes to the collector of Q3 in this, in this pad down here. And the next one is our output resistor. Um, I've talked about this before on several of the Mark 1 videos, but I make these smaller. This is 820K. Um, the stock value is 2.2 million ohms, and it's, uh, I, I just like this better. Uh, you can watch those videos if you want a more in-depth of what, what's kind of going on there, but this will go here. The signal flow kind of meets up here, and then it splits off. So in this meets up in this top corner, and then it splits off to a, a few places. But this will be um, kind of where it goes to the output to the volume pot down here. There is a resistor that goes to ground on the output. In this case it's 47k, that's the stock, um, I would say the stock solo value. Probably the most common as far as um, the values you would typically see on a Mark 1. We've got a couple other resistors here. These go on the board in a different place. This goes under the board. So um, we'll do that in a minute, but first I've got to do this bigger cap that goes on the output here. This is the output cap. On this circuit, pretty much anywhere you see a capacitor, the bigger components here, it's coupling different stages. So it's what the caps are doing is they're, they're blocking DC voltages from going from one stage to the next so that the bias can remain uh, consistent in each stage and um, so that uh, voltage doesn't leak in or out of the circuit. Um, so on the input, that's partly what the input cap is doing. It's filtering um, your signal by changing the value of that. You can filter out um, low end. Um, then you can also filter high end and if you were to send some of that signal to ground through a cap. Uh, in this case, it doesn't have that. There's a, there's no filtering on the input. There's just the filtering that filters the low end a tiny bit, but it also blocks DC voltage from coming back out and going back to your foot switch and therefore back into your guitar or into your amp through the output, which is what the output cap is doing. Also filtering, but this is a bigger value. This is 0 0.01 on the input. This is 0 0.1 here in the middle and here on the output, and it's a lot bigger value. You're not really filtering much uh, low end out of a guitar. Uh, maybe out of a bass, you might filter a bit of low end. Um, you could make that bigger if you wanted to make like a bass version of this. Um, that doesn't rob any low end, but it's kind of fun to play that through, um, like a low tuned or a bass instrument anyway, because it makes it cut more. So we've got all of the pretty much most of the components on there. Uh, we've got to do the transistors next, and uh, this one, this is a mod that I do to increase the leakage of Q1. This will go under the board, and I'll show you when we install that. But I'll just kind of pre-bend that so that it's ready to go. These two will go, one of them would normally be kind of flying off of the circuit board, or off of the component board, it would be kind of flying off of there going to the pot, but there's a, a little trace here that allows me to just mount it directly to the board, and then the trace will go to the pot. So it's a little bit um, kind of cleaner and uh, easier to do. You don't have to kind of balance a bunch of things and then solder them together. Okay, and then this one is uh, for the LED. It fits in right there. Um, so the LED is mounted right to the board and so is the resistor that um, pulls down some of the current. So we'll put those in last. This we'll put in as we're installing Q1, which uh, we'll do that in a second. But right now, we're going to solder a few of the points that are already done. They don't need, uh, they don't need any additional components in them. It's been sitting for a little while on, so I'm just gonna 
tin the tip a little bit so it looks clean all right we're looking good and then I just tin the tip a little bit more and apply heat and go ahead and fill with solder and just wait for it to dry it looks good it looks good on both sides I'm kind of looking um, for a couple things I, I want to make sure the hole is filled but also uh, ideally you'll have the solder just kind of starting to creep up onto the component legs on both sides and it's doing that on this one so we're good to go there but that's what I'll be looking for as I'm doing this is just to make sure the solder kind of wicks its way up onto the components and that there's enough solder in the, in the joint. Other than now, this doesn't really get hot, so like inside of an amplifier, you might want a little more sturdy construction with adding a lot of solder, but it doesn't get hot inside of here. So um, don't need too much solder. All right, so we're gonna do, this is the output. We're gonna do, so it's a nine volt to Q3 collector. And we're also going to do Q3 ground Oops. from that 8.2K. And we can do the input. It's right here. Just wait a sec for it to all dry. All right, looks pretty good. I might add a little bit more here. I think it just needs a little bit more solder, but it looks okay. It would function fine. I just want it to look nice. There we go. That looks good. All right, so we can cut these guys. I'm just kind of move all this stuff out of the way as I'm going. Alright, now we can install the transistors. Um, start, I start and I kind of do the same thing I do as the circuit flows left to right. So Q1. Um, you can see it has a little red dot. So the red dot is our collector. Um, the way I install these is I'll, this will be the base and the emitter. And I'll just line up the base and the emitter and go directly down into the holes. Plenty of room on these eyelets to put quite a few components here should you need to. And then I'll just kind of bend it down, bend the legs up with the rest of the components. Um, this collector is going to go over here, so I'm going to have to insulate it with some uh, wire insulation. Uh, but I'll do that after I've installed the other two. And actually, I'll have to also install this 2.2 meg resistor under the board. But I have to do this one first. Because that goes right in between, and the resistor will kind of cover that up once it's installed. Should be good there. That looks good. Can you see that? Uh, let's see if I can point at it here. So nice solder joint. The solder is just kind of wicking up onto the components on the top there and it's not too full. that there for now still and this will go on the bottom of the board there's no really good spot for it on the top and it's just out of the way on the bottom so. and this is going from 9 volts to the base and it's um, a pretty high value resistor so just a little bit of uh, voltage is being added basically to the base giving you kind of like uh, simulating more leakage. But we're able to use a transistor that doesn't leak 
quite as much and is quiet and otherwise specs out really nice for this. Um, it just lets me use a lot more transistors that otherwise wouldn't necessarily work there. Um, no detriment to sound. It sounds exactly right, exactly how you'd want it to. So we'll do this one first because um, the collector is going to go here. We'll have to put that in before we solder it. A lot of components in this hole now, so it might take a little bit longer to solder it up and make sure it flows everywhere. That looks pretty good. Yep. Okay. And I just usually cut just a little bit of insulation or strip it off of the wire here and install that onto the transistor. However long it needs to be, I'll figure out in a minute here. But it's gonna bend around and kinda of go over a few components, so I like to use that insulation there so it doesn't short out on anything and become a completely different circuit. That's really the only spot where it's um, kind of crosses over a lot. There is another on Q3, but it's enough out of the way that you can, you don't really need to use insulation on that. All right, ready to solder that hole. Looks good on both sides. So Q1 is installed now, and it looks good. And I just like to kind of bend things around here so they just have a little bit of a chaotic look to it. It just looks a little bit older that way, kind of old. Uh, like an old fuzz when you open it up and look at it. If you do that. So, Q3, or Q2 next. This is a lot easier to install because the three legs are all in a row on this side where they mount and um, it's a lot easier to get that in the circuit. The um, transistor has a little white dot and that indicates the collector. I just use something round like this screwdriver, which is used for a lot of stuff besides just a screwdriver. And I bend it around that a little bit and back on itself like that. And go through the eyelets on the board. I don't want a lot of it sticking out the top, just enough that it clears everything. And this is pretty much the same process as what I've been doing for a while now with the eyelet boards or the hybrid eyelet boards that I've been building with. But uh, this one just has a few more little tricks to make it fit into a smaller box. All right, one at a time. We'll do these transistor legs. Looks nice. I just bend this a little bit up. There we good. 
And the last one here. All right, that one's in there. We can cut the rest of the length of wire and lead off. And it looks pretty clean. Um, now I'll just kind of separate the legs of the transistor a little bit more. And just form it into the shape that I think looks nice. pretty good already. Alright, so that one Q2 is in. Now Q3. Uh, with this one it's got a little tab here. That indicates uh, where the emitter is. So the emitter is here. And um, the emitter goes to ground on this side. So what I usually do is I'll just bend the base kind of this shape and then install it up here where the base goes. I'll do that first. Seems to fit the best with this style transistor. There's um, different shapes that sometimes they work, um, you know, better one way or another. But once we get this in, it'll kind of hold everything in place pretty well for us to move the rest of the legs around. Needs a little more solder, but I can do that in a minute. Kind of tuck the leg in there so the transistor sits a little bit farther in between those two caps. We're gonna bend the emitter this way, kind of a, an S bend. And just fit it down into this eyelet, which is um, on this, it's ground there. So we're grounding the emitter. Q3. I didn't cut this one yet because I, I think I still need to add a little bit of solder to it just for it to flow enough to the other side. There we go. But I like to, um, I like to just have, um, enough something to, to hold on to. And then I'll cut it when it's all done. It also is kind of like a slightly like a heat sink, I guess. Having a little more legs on this side versus having the heat only go up towards the transistor. And uh, that'll hold it in place while we solder it. I'll do it one more time on this top one here. Is nice on top. What I do in this case is I will just have to flow a little bit from the top. It's not a big deal, but it'll kind of help to disperse this. It's just not as nice looking as I'd like it to be on the top. There we go. Much better. And I'll go back and clean that up when it's all done. Trim this excess now. So the grounded emitter here, I kind of want to bend some of this stuff so it's clearing like the cap and there's enough of a gap there. And it looks like we're good. The collector will go straight down to this last um, eyelet we haven't soldered yet. Slide that in here. There we go. And solder that last one. This might be a slightly longer video. Um, try to. I made one earlier, and I'm trying to make this one a little bit shorter because it was pretty long. But we'll see if I can condense it. Oh, that looks really good. And 
and I'm just gonna kind of bend the legs of the transistors again around to make sure everything's clearing. It looks really good. There's a little bit of flux on the bottom, but it's not really um, that much, and it's um, not gonna hurt the circuit at all. But I, I like to keep the top clean if at all possible. Um, and it looks good so far. So I'll go ahead and um, I'll add these two resistors to the board now. So this is a 1.8K. That's the stock value that goes from here on the base of um, the base of Q2, and it goes down to um, the middle lug lug two of the attack pot, and it sets like the minimum attack um, preset, I guess. The uh, the minimum attack throw, so like all the way turned down. Um, you could make it a little bit bigger and you can kind of get the spot exactly just where you want it. Um, I just use the stock value so that it's kind of the most like the original. When it's all the way turned down, it's not as um, maybe you uh, useful as it could be though. So if you decide you want to mod something, that's a nice place to mod it, it just increase that. Probably closer to, say, 5 or 10k uh, would get you closer to having the fuzz on throughout the entire sweep. Where, where it's set now with the stock value, when the attack is all the way down, there's kind of not much happening. There's not a lot of uh, fuzz happening. It's really gated out at that point because the transistor is not turned on yet. But you can really fine tune the sweep with that if you needed to. So again, I just use the stock one. So, and here's um, the resistor for the LED. This will just fit right here. And it's kind of nice. It's symmetrical. We've got a resistor on both sides, so it looks pretty clean. So now we need to add some wires to the board. Um, it goes to the foot switch and go to the power jack and go to ground. So kind of the in out power ground. And there's um, there's these little solder pads here on the side and one at the top here. And uh, that's where our wires will go. Just gotta clean up the board really quick while it's free from everything else. It looks really good. I may uh, flow a couple of these solder joints just to make them look a little bit nicer on top. So how I do that is I'll just uh, select this one right here. I just kind of would like it to look nicer. I'll just uh, go ahead and put the iron underneath it and let gravity kind of pull. There it goes. I'll do that to the one next to it. Yeah, that looks better. Just so it's kind of a nice flat surface. Not at all necessary for um, the functionality of the circuit, just for my own sanity. I like it to look nice. Okay, those all look really good. We'll add the wires now. This is pretty easy to do. Uh, but I have a really particular way to do it, <clears throat> just to try to keep the solder flux off of the top of the board. It's, they're going to be mounted to the bottom of the board. Um, I'm going to cut the wires first, I'll kind of pre-cut them to the right size. I'll need four wires that are four inches long, and I'll need one wire that's six inches long. And that'll give me what I need to go on the board. 
and for the most part they'll be cut to the right size. I may need to trim a couple of them once they're in the in the pedal enclosure. So there's four four inch wires. I also need another wire that's um, three and a quarter, and that's for something else in the pedal, but while I'm doing it, I might as well do that now. So... I'll save that for the other wire that we need it for. We'll get into that in a minute. But first, we're gonna do these. So, um, I'll do this one first. This is power. And I'll just kinda half install it into the hole. And I'll solder it from the bottom. All right, and then I'll just go ahead and reheat the joint and I'll just insert the wire all the rest of the way. And we're looking for the same thing on the top for it to just flow up onto the component, or in this case, it's just wire. That looks good. Now I'm gonna do the ones on the side. got a few of these to make today so I think this is number two and I probably got to do a couple more kind of pull on the wires a little bit just to make sure that they're sturdy that they're on there pre kind of stress them a little bit all right now the other side pre-trimming them like this makes this go a lot faster rather than doing them one at a time and if I'm making a bunch of these at a time that's kind of what it it takes a lot of this construction stuff is just whatever I can do to make it quicker without sacrificing any kind of durability or sound. Actually tuning the pedals takes much longer sometimes, uh, especially if I'm doing quite a few of them. around now a little bit just so that they'll um, kind of be going aimed in the right direction and so I can get the board in the enclosure easier because it's a smaller enclosure on this and it's a pretty tight squeeze but, uh, and just move this there we go move the leg of that transistor over a little bit but there's the board built up and I just need to do uh, parts in the box and then link the two together. So first thing in here, I wanna do this resistor, which is a zero ohm, this is a zero ohm resistor, which is essentially a jumper. Um, just a fancy jumper. They're they're not expensive though, so it's worth it to me to have just a kind of a piece of wire 
already preset to do the bypass for the foot switch. I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna bend just with the end of my um, little pliers here. I'm gonna bend that so it's like so. On one side, I'm gonna cut it in half, the length completely in half. Just find the middle and cut it. And then I'll find where the middle of that half is and cut the other one in the middle. So it leaves me with these two pieces. I've got sort of a long scrap piece and then one with the jumper on it, which doesn't really need to be there. You could just use a piece of wire, but it just looks kind of nice to have that zero ohm resistor, I think. Uh, so this is gonna go from the input lug to the circuit to down here on the bottom at an angle. And I'm just gonna bend these like so, keep everything in place. And I like to push them, just push them all the way down. Um, I run the iron pretty hot. It's like around, it's, I think it's all the way turned up. It's like 100, uh, 850 degrees, so pretty hot iron. Um, if you're pretty good at soldering and you're pretty fast, um, I think it works better. It's faster and you, I, I get really good results with it, but you have to be pretty quick on uh, foot switch lugs because this epoxy will melt really quickly. All right, so we're looking good here. And now I just need this guy. And this is our bypass. So it's gonna go from the input plug on the jack to here. And if it's in bypass, it's gonna go through this and then out to the output jack. Pretty straightforward. This is a nice layout because it's symmetrical. It's pretty common. I think a lot of people use it. You don't need to have this extra piece of wire right here. You can see that. Technically, when it's in this position, this will be joined internally in the switch. Um, but it's nice if you want to reduce some of the noise from that switching on and off. It'll be just permanently switched and it won't affect you know, the bypass sound or quality and it'll work the same. But it also is a kind of a redundancy should that part of the switch fail. It's not very common. Not as common as maybe you would think. I think I've repaired maybe two foot switches and one of them was on my test box that I use for like bypassing uh, uh, circuit boards or um, bypassing the breadboard that I have. So I can, it kind of has ins and outs and ground on it. I've gone through that foot switch, but it, it's, it's been turned on an awful lot. Uh, the one I have in there currently is a few years old and it's fine. A lot of times, the if the foot, uh, foot switch is gonna fail, it'll fail on me when I'm building it and not necessarily on the user. Uh, I mean, over time, this will that'll wear out, but it's gonna take a lot of switches. All right, so that's all in there nice. Uh, we're gonna do this wire next, which connects uh, this center lug of the power jack and the switch lug on the um, input jack. So what this does is, this is your ground, essentially, and it turns the ground uh, into a switch, kind of, on the, power, on the power jack. So when you're using the battery, um, it'll work normally, but when you unplug this, it will disconnect the battery. Uh, if you were, also, if you were have everything plugged in and you were using a battery, you were to plug a nine volt power jack into here, uh, with or without power on it, it will disconnect the battery. So could be useful if you were thinking about maybe putting it on your board with a battery on it, but then uh, didn't want to unplug it, you can just put a battery um, plug into here, or a power plug into here, and it'll disconnect the battery. 
Um, and that's because this lug is switched and this lug is switched down here. So it's sort of dependent on whether or not things are plugged into it, whether or not they're functional. Anyway, let's put this wire in here. I'm going to give this wire a little bit of a, like a 90 degree bend so I can, I want to fit this wire like all the way up against the wall of the inside wall of the enclosure. So it's out of the way. I'll show you. I've already sort of predetermined the length. So this is that three and a quarter inch wire length. So it's the perfect length to do this. I just fold that over to give it a kind of a mechanical connection before I solder it, uh, mainly because it, it stays in place now when I'm trying to solder it. And it looks pretty clean. It may provide some uh, mechanical resistance, resistance to failure, but uh, it's not likely somebody is going to be going in there and moving it around a whole bunch. So I'm just going to push this against the inside wall and up. And that wire's in there now. And it's just completely out of the way now, but it's connecting these two. Um, okay, now we can do the input and output jack connection to the foot switch. There's, um, this is bus wire. It's pretty, it's pretty thick, but it's not overly thick. I want to say it's 24 or 22 gauge, I think, bus wire. And I'm just going to cut like about an inch. And we'll um, connect these inputs. Uh, this is just, a, I think, the cleanest way i found to do this. It looks nice. It's, it's pliable enough to withstand, um, you know, moving around a little bit, but it's um, robust enough to kind of keep everything in place as well. Sorry, this is tricky to kind of show you and do it at the same time. A lot of um, wire bending here. But basically, I've got just one wire going from here, the uh, this terminal on the foot switch, this lug, to the output jack, um, the hot lug. And I can just solder these two connections. Looks good. And we'll do the other one. Uh, this gives it also just a really short path and there's not as much uh, overlap of components physically inside here, which is always good on a Mark 1. There's sort of some effects of having input and output components kind of too close to each other. That's uh, somewhat undesirable. So nice to have uh, some isolation from some of the components. And then, uh, like I said, it just kind of makes it look real nice and clean inside bit of a trick to get it um, bent in place sometimes. There we go. This has a little bit extra down here. Cut that off. Cut this excess off. Kind of a tight gap in here, so gotta make sure I don't melt the power jack. Uh, but yeah, that's all done. You can see the 
there's two bus wires here and here. So when the signal comes in, it just goes through that. And if it's in bypass, it'll go up through this um, zero ohm resistor and then straight back out. Pretty short. Um, it's ready to put the circuit in now. I need uh, the LED. We'll do the uh, battery snap last. Let's see. So we've got the circuit here, and then you've got your LED that mounts directly to the board. I'm gonna install that, but just loosely, and kind of hold it all together with one hand. This wire, there's a little piece in there. This wire goes all the way, this long one goes all the way to the power jack. So kind of install it underneath everything. That should work. And then just straight down onto the pots. Once uh, it gets down there far enough, um, the LED can kind of just hang out and it'll go into the hole in the enclosure. All right, that's all in there. And I'm just gonna move these out of the way a little bit down here. can solder the pots in place. For the LED, um, it's flat on the top, and I like it to, uh, the idea is for it to sit flush with the top, so what I'll usually do, you can see it's sticking out right now. What I'll usually do is I'll just put a little piece of blue painter's tape over it, and uh, make sure it's flush, and then I'll just solder it from back here in place. nice and flush on top doesn't stick out and just looks kind of cool it doesn't kind of over clutter the pedal design with um, things it's really simple I think I really like that so we'll start with the power jack wire which was the longest one and I'll just make sure this is all the right length it's gonna be a little bit too long. I can always trim it back a little bit. Okay. I'll just strip back the wire and then I'll kind of bend it to fit into that lug on the power jack. And it should just sit really nice up against the inside of the enclosure in there. It's just um, all the way against this wall, out of the way. And uh, let's see, next we'll do these two wires on this side. They're um, they're both the right length already, so I don't need to cut them to size, but I do need to strip a little bit of the wire off of here. And then I just um, kind of push back the wire a little bit so that it sits nice up against the, the wall of the enclosure as well. And then it'll kind of loop around up to the foot switch. Just really, it's out of the way. Aesthetically and electronically, pretty much it's out of the way. Made a lot of cool pedals 
since I started doing this, but I really am probably the most proud of this series, this origin series. Just having uh, everything in these boxes and how the paints and colors and graphics and everything came out. It's just uh, exactly what I've, I've wanted it to be for a while. All right, so that's out of the way. This wire, that was the input wire. This wire is for the LED, so it switches uh, the LED on and off by grounding this wire. When you turn the effect on, it'll ground the wire and it'll uh, turn the LED on. In this pedal, in this case, it's positive ground, so it's a little bit, like everything's a little bit backwards for how the LED is hooked up, but it's the same process. in there and wires look clean they just kind of sit right up next to each other inside of there and um, don't have any noise issues with that uh, if if this wire on this side were next to this wire on this side which is this is the input this is the output it might make quite a bit of noise but they're far enough away so next we're going to ground the circuit board to the output jack ground lug. We're getting to where we're almost done. Pretty close. And I'm just gonna bend this again, like kind of a right angle. Make it look as nice as I can. The only other thing that you didn't really see is um, kind of everything else that goes into sorting and measuring the components, uh, but that's a little bit boring. But maybe one day <laughs> I can show you uh, a sort of maybe my process on sort of um, sorting through caps and making sure they're the right values. That would be a pretty short video, but could be useful if you're um, trying to get into making pedals and you want to know what my process is. Um, cause some caps are, uh, old but, and cool, but bad to use for certain spots and certainly most, I suppose most pedals. Uh, caps don't last forever, but the right caps like these are really, um, well, these, um, these are like some Soviet military caps. They're really sealed up, so, um, that helps a lot. Those old, uh, you can find those old, like, Sprague paper and oil caps, like the vitamin Q's and uh, any kind of glass sealed type um, cap. They're usually sealed up so well that everything's, nothing really dries out inside. They're uh, quite expensive, but that's what you would have seen on a lot of the military stuff because they wanted it to last and be durable. So now we have a surplus of all that because it's a little bit too big now for any modern application. I still think they probably use some of that stuff, but um, yeah, lots of the stuff is, um, lots of modern uh, electronic stuff is all small surface mount stuff now. All right, just tuck that out of the way. Tuck this out of the way. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in case you've never seen one. I have a few in here. When I show you, you probably, maybe you have seen it before, but this is like a metal can. You can see there's a little glass end right there um, on both sides. So it's, the cap is completely sealed in here. Um, it's probably made in the 60s, I guess, 50s maybe, a lot of these. I just have a bag of a bunch of them. Um, people use them in guitars, I guess, because they're, they're paper and oil, uh, but they'll work in anything. Um, and as long as the 
rating is right. This is only a hundred volt cap, so and it's kind of big, so not that useful in a modern setting, except for maybe in a pedal or uh, in your guitar. They look really nice too, and um, just kind of give it an old school look and vibe. Okay, all that's done, almost done. I've got to do um, the battery snap next. So it has a little adhesive on one side and you can just remove that. Um, I've already done this, it didn't come this way, but this is a separate piece. So this is a, it's like a zip tie tie down that's got adhesive on the back and um, you can just peel and stick it somewhere and you could tie some wires to it or you know do whatever you want to do with it but I looped the battery snap through it and pulled it tight so when this is stuck down it's not pulling on the solder connection it's the solder connection is isolated from this end so when you're kind of moving this around it doesn't mess with the connection it's kind of a strain relief this goes underneath the power jack, so you kind of have to like guide it under there. there we go. And then once you get it in there, you can stick that down with just a little pressure. And I just move this down here and out of the way. So it's in there, it just needs uh, these two soldered and then we're almost done. There's still one more wire and I'll, I'll explain what that one does when we get there. So. Do the red one first. It's a pretty tight squeeze at this point, getting in here. Um, that's not too bad. This, uh, these little battery snaps, usually they're not pre tin so when I remove that, I just kind of twist it off, and then the wire twists up and it's stranded wire, and then I'll just uh, tin it. This is good to get a good solid solder connection. Okay, ready to solder. We tin it, well, it's just all it takes to get it soldered up, so. Now just kind of bend the wire a little bit out of the way, since it's a tight squeeze under there. But now it's not in the way of anything, not touching anything else. And the black wire will go, I didn't solder this wire in place, this was from the board here, um, but that's because this is also going, so the, the black end of the battery snap is also going there. Get that measured out. And we're gonna do the same thing to strip back some and then I'll remove it a little bit just so that it's starting to come off and then I'll start twisting it as I'm taking it off. So it leaves a twisted on the end. And then just tin that end. Hopefully this was uh, fun to watch. I'm almost done here. Uh, if you liked it, uh, let me know. I can do more like this, or I can just do this regularly. This is normally, this is most of my day. It's just, it's this part. Apart from, you know, tuning transistors and making videos and shipping things and answering emails. Uh, yeah, but this is the part that I enjoy, I think the most. Playing demos is fun too, but um, this is relaxing. All right, I think that's all in there and we should be good to go now. All the wires are tucked out of the way. I still have to clean up the board. It's got some flux on the top here and I'll just use some flux remover on that or you could use like acetone. Um, but otherwise, uh, I don't have to put the pedals on or the knobs on the pedals. Um, just kind of tighten those up now that it's all secure in there. 
still have to put the knobs on, but that's pretty easy. Um, just tighten those up. We've got little grub screws back here. And, oh, you know what? <laughs> I missed one wire. I've done this before. Only one, one minor fatal mistake here that I made. Not putting this wire in. It's pretty good for an hour long video. So this will, this is ground here on this connection. It'll go to the center lug of the um, foot switch and that will either, when it's in bypass, it will ground the input of the circuit or it will, when it's on, it will ground the LED. So it'll give you, the LED will turn on and off or it'll silence the circuit when it's off, which is um, two in one, it's ideal. What I usually do is I'll just kind of bend that back and let the plier sit on top of it to wedge it in place. Get that nice and soldered up. Looks good. And it'll need a, don't need very much wire here. Just a little bit of wire. I've got some ideas for some more videos like uh, like this or some different specifically pedal stuff. Um, but if you have an idea, let me know. You can just uh, message me or email me or whatever. And, um, or leave a comment. And I'll check it out and see what I can do. We'll get this last solder joint done. And this pedal will be ready to test. And once I get it tested, I may make a, just a quick demo. Since I'll be hooked up for it anyway, I'll just have to plug in my phone and make a quick demo of, of the pedal and probably post it here and on uh, Instagram. But now it's done inside. Ideally, uh, it's done. It might, <laughs> there might be something wrong with it, but usually we're pretty good. And um, I've done my due diligence in testing all the components tuning the transistors with the specific values that it is ready to go. But every now and then, you never know. Uh, anyway, I uh, hope you like watching it. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, <laughs> listening to me talk about soldering stuff. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.